it's something that it's so hard to really explain. It's just pure excitement. I remember them screaming your name, and I just remember like, don't turn around, don't turn around, don't turn around, because, oh yeah, they hate you. They hate you. There is no bigger matchup in North America than the United States against Mexico. While the marquee event has always drawn passion and intensity, the childhood and upbringing of players with Mexican ancestry further complicates the rivalry. Tell me about your childhood growing up in Chula Vista, kind of a border town, Mexican-Americans all over the place. The reality is, is that, you know, the majority of them were Mexicans. Um, and so for me, it was really unique. Even when I'm young, I'm playing like soccer and it's USA versus Mexico or it's Mexico. And you're always on the US side? I'm always on the US <laughs> side. And, it, and you know what, to be honest with you, it wasn't always US, right? It was like Mexico and then Against it was like everyone. everyone else. Right. Julian, let's start with your childhood. Mexican-American games, how did you grow up watching them? We would always have a little barbecue with the family, always a get-together for sure. Um, I think that's what I remember most as a child, playing in the front yard and watching games. I think that was one of my, my best childhood memories. What's on this barbecue? You gotta talk me through it. Ah, tri-tip, carne asada, tri-tip, asada, <laughs> tri -tip, tacos, quesadillas, everything. You name it, we, they were making it. <laughs> and always rooting for Mexico? As a kid, yeah, always rooting for Mexico. Growing up, we were rooting for Mexico, and you know, one of my idols is Jorge Campos. I wanted to be like him, you know, he's a, he was a goalkeeper, a forward, and he, he just did it all. He was the man. Watching USA Mexico as a kid was all cheering on Mexico. Both my mom and dad were born near Monterrey, Mexico, and so that's how it was. In the midst of the rivalry, Mexican-Americans face complicated questions of loyalty and belonging and are continuously pushed to prove how truly Mexican or American they are. I'm also a dual national. I played for Mexico. You played for the U.S., mm -hmm. but growing up, what was that like for you? Just thinking about my childhood and how club soccer is all white and yeah. a lot of money. And I lived in a poor neighborhood and on the south side and everything was on the north side. And so for me growing up as a Mexican-American, I found myself putting away my, Mar my Mexican heritage, my Mexican culture. Mm -hmm. Just always want what my white friends had. Exactly. The big house, yeah. the nice cars, everything else. And I, I, was, I was a bit ashamed of it. So something that I talked to Omar Gonzalez about is how inside his house, he was Mexican. As soon as he walked out, he felt the need to be someone else. Is that something that you, you can relate to? Yeah, 100%, yeah. I think in my household, everything was like a Mexican culture, you know? And then once I got out, all my teammates, wherever I played, were American, yeah. Number 14, Michael Orozco. Eventually, the pressure peaks, and Mexican Americans are forced to choose between representing one side or the other. When I was called in for the pre qualifiers for the Olympics, it's when my heart started dividing. I chose the U.S. because this is where I was born. I went through that U.S. system, and I think playing for U.S. changed a lot of things for me. That aspect that you talk about, you know, it's your parents' home, and they're going to be so proud of you. And my mom was bawling her eyes out when I was playing for Mexico. Yeah. That was like the world to her. Yeah. People from the U.S. didn't understand that. How would you explain that? Yeah, I think it was just the culture that I grew up in. You know, my family would always show me where they grew up, what their roots were, a lot of stories, memories. And um, yeah, to be honest, I think it's just like the values, what they instilled in us. It's just where you come from. It's your home. Yes, I played for the U.S. And when I was wearing that shirt and when I was stepping on that field, my God, you know, my parents are U.S. citizens as, as well. and and. And when I'm on that field, they're cheering just as hard for the U.S. as they would for Mexico. Okay, here we go. Play. Martin Vasquez is the embodiment of being both proud of your roots and open to new opportunities, a trait he hopes to impart on his students at his Los Angeles United Football Academy. Martin, you have played for both the USA and Mexico. There's only three people that have done it. You're the first ever. What does that mean? You know what, at first, I didn't think much of it, but when people like yourself make mention of it, I take a deep breath and I think about when I play for Mexico and then for the U.S. And I can tell you that the pride was the same, being grateful to be able to represent both countries. You guys know there's a World Cup qualifier coming up. Big game. Who's going to win? Mexico. <laughs> it, never, it never fails. That was half and half. You get your citizenship at 32. You then get the call up to play for the United States. What was your reaction? What was everyone's reaction around you? I mean, there had to have been someone that was like, it's not gonna work. When the opportunity was given to me, I took it 
You know, I took it with, you know, both hands, both hands, my my whole heart and, you know, just felt grateful. Future generations will continue to face the tough choice as the North American Giants try to gain the upper hand in the battle for Mexican-American players. You see Ricardo Pepe yeah. making his decision and what kind of effect do you think that had on the community and players after him and choosing the U.S. over Mexico potentially? I think uh, there's a lot of great qualities and that's what you need when you need a game changer and I think that's the player that the U.S. needs and being Mexican-American I think it will open up a lot of opportunity. How do you explain that rivalry though? I mean, for people that don't understand it, you know, it doesn't have that Mexican-American or any kind of duality inside of them. How do you explain it? Um, it's a beautiful one. These are the games that I wanted to play in as a kid. This is what I dreamed of. You know, I woke up to, to watch these games uh, as a kid. Uh, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. This year has completely changed that dynamic, wouldn't you say? I believe so, I believe so. How empowering is that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, that's amazing, but at the same time, you know, the show continues. You know, it's, it's every year and that's what makes a rivalry beautiful, right?